Hi, Randy, K7AGE. I'm going to talk about antenna analyzers a little bit today. MFJ sells many different analyzers. Their 259 series, and there's several variations, is very popular. I have a 269, which is basically the same thing, but covers 70 centimeters. So these antenna analyzers offer a lot of different test functionality. The one we're going to look at today is frequency and SWR. When you're putting up a new antenna, you want to check to see where the antenna is resonant. Make sure it's where you had thought it was going to be. And the analyzer helps you measure that and determine if you need to make it longer or shorter. So the alternative to an antenna analyzer is an SWR bridge or meter or the SWR meter in your radio. Although these require you to transmit. The antenna analyzer is nice because it's off air. It's also makes it easy to take out in the field versus taking your radio out. So we'll look at an SWR meter first and then we'll show you doing the same measurements with the MFJ analyzer. First here I'm going to show you using the SWR meter that's in my Drake antenna tuner which I'm not using as a tuner, it's just in bypass. I'm going to be using my 40 meter dipole and I have my K3 set to about 7.2 megahertz and the way a SWR meter works is that there's usually some type of full scale adjustment. So on here I push this knob in and transmit and set the meter for full scale and let go of that and then transmit and on the SWR here it's reading about 1.75 or if you have a real fancy power meter, it may also give you an SWR measurement. Just hit the button, the key, and it tells me it's 1.6. So 1.6 on this meter, 1.7 on the other. Yeah, they're close enough. Now let's take a look at using the antenna analyzer to do this as well. Okay, this is what the antenna analyzer looks like. This is a 269. It does 70 centimeters. The 259 is basically the same thing. These things have changed over the years with different knobs and different information being displayed, but they're all kind of the same. Um, there's a knob here for tuning the frequency. There's a basically a, a band switch that selects between different frequency ranges. And on the top is where your antenna can plug in. And the MFJ you can put internal batteries, but I don't use it that often, so I power mine off an external 12 volt gel cell. There's a couple things you should be aware of. You never want RF going into the meter from a transmitter. You'll blow up the front end. They recommend that you short the center to ground to discharge any static before connecting the coax. Also, if you're in an area with a high RF environment, like if you have an AM broadcast station nearby, you may get erroneous readings on the meter. Okay, so the way this works, you turn the meter on. It goes through a little self-check, tells you the software, MFJ, tells you the battery's okay, and then it's in the basic impedance or SWR checking. The, I have it on the 4 to 10 megahertz scale because I'm checking a 40 meter dipole, which is 7 megahertz, and this knob then allows you to tune. There's a meter here that shows SWR, and on the 269 it actually also shows you SDR, SWR digitally in the top, and, and this shows you the impedance, and we're aiming for 50 ohms. So basically what you do is that you tune this and you can see the dip here in SWR and the frequency here is 7.00. So it's, my antenna is actually resonant at the very bottom of the band which is really not good. I should change that which means I need to raise it which means I need, need to shorten the antenna. But for right now this is what we have. So. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to check the SWR in 7 megs at 100 kC intervals and see what the, the range looks like. So we know at 7.0 or 699 it's at 1 to 1, so that's uh, 1.0. And we raise this, we just tune this up to 7.1. It's, it's a little quick on the tuning. It just yeah, there's close enough. Okay, that's uh, 1.2. I can go up to 7.2, it's 1.5, so you can see the SWR is rising. If I go up to 7.3, and it's 1.8. Now what's really nice with these, you can go outside of the amateur band. So let's just um, say go down here to 6.9, 6.8, and 6.7 here, and see what my SWR is. 
looking for 690. Okay. That's 1.2 uh, on the 6.8, 1.6, 6 6.7, 2.1. As you can see, the antenna is resonant at 7 megahertz. Now that's right at the very bottom of the 40 meter band. If I was a phone operator, I would probably want to, since I have to move it higher, I'd have to shorten up the antenna to bring the SWR from 1.5 down. Although just about all radios will work into a 1.5 or 1.8 SWR without any problems. Okay, so I've taken my data versus frequency and plotted out a, a graph, real simple, and I can see that my 7.0 is where it's resonant. And again, if I wanted to shift this graph higher, I'd have to shorten up the antenna. So I quickly showed how to use an MFJ antenna analyzer. And almost any analyzer will do these basic functions of showing SWR versus frequency. You do several measurements and you can make yourself a little graph. The fancy meters have a display that shows you the graph. And you can probably plug it into a computer to store the information. I recommend you get, a, get one of these notebooks, record all your station information manually, Go in and uh, do the plots for each one of your antennas. Maybe if you have an antenna tuner, record down all the settings so you can quickly go back. Uh, if you have an amplifier, you can record all the settings in your notebook of where the, how to tune up your amplifier. And then over time, if something changes, you can go back and check your notebook to see what it was because sometimes the old memory isn't uh, quite what we think it is. So. Anyway, that's a quick overview of an antenna analyzer and how it can be useful. It's a nice piece of test gear. As one of my original Elmers said, invest in test gear. Thanks for watching. This is Randy, K7AGE.